Welcome back to our channel. This is Rebecca. This is Mark, and we are La Vie Flotante, which means the, the floating, floating life. life in English. Yeah, if you are new to our channel, so we just want you to know what that mean in English. We are full time RVers, so we want uh, this channel is all about sharing our la RV living experience yeah. and our travel in our RV. And the things we like to do, like we like to ride motorcycle, we like to do scuba diving, we like photography. Yep. So we will share all of this and all the other fun stuff in our life. So if you are interested in those topics, please subscribe to our channel so you will get the, the update videos. Okay. So today in this episode, we are going to talk about how we decide our RV. And the process you should probably go through when you're looking for your RV. Yes, what's the key point to make us make the decision of choose this current one we are living in. So sometimes it's hard to, to get started. It really was hard for us at first because there's a lot of education. Everything is different. You have to start to look at your lives, how many people in your family, how mm -hmm. much storage you think you need, mm -hmm. and, and then maybe reconsider after you pair back. Uh, but the main thing is trying to figure out your lifestyle, where you want to go, how often you're going to stay in a location, uh, what is kind of the, you know, how much are you going to be on the go? Because there's a big differences in the different uh, types of RVs mm -hmm. and what you want to do. Some people look at really small stuff like Class, class C, C, Class B mm -hmm. RVs. Well, they may be down to 20, 25 feet, and they can live in it full time. Some people are doing that. For us, we decided we wanted a little more space. But we don't want yeah. to be so cramped. Yeah. We still want to be living yeah. comfortably. So, so after we went to the RV show, we kind of have a, a more idea about what type of RV right. is better for us. Right. So there are so many like fifth wheeler. There are RV uh, a class ABC. Yeah. There's travel trailer diesel versus gas engines yeah, and then toy hauler and then we kind of um, discussing in between fifth wheeler and class a so why so there's two big things that occur normally first of all try and buy what you can afford mm -hmm. don't get too far in debt because that won't do you any good you can always trade up later on the other hand most people buy too small and they end up trading up and you look at the long run you may have saved more money just buying what you needed to begin with yeah we have a one it, neighbor a young couple oh they yeah forced, they forced they bought, bought a, a flea, flea wood uh, two slides only yeah and then one day we saw hey they change rv and then more slides and like a three or four slide and then we asked them next time. yeah and they, they still only own the old <laughs> one so they yeah have, so it we asked them so. why you change it to from a class A to a fifth wheeler, and they told us a bigger space yeah, because bigger fifth space. wheeler have a bigger space. They only have two slides, so it's really small, yeah. uh, tight. So they need a uh, lots of workspace. So that's why they changed to fifth wheel. But don't be surprised mm -hmm. if you buy something and you end up trading up because you didn't buy the right one or you didn't do your research. That mm -hmm. I've seen a lot. We, a lot. We've been pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't mind a nicer one than we have. But frankly, what we bought, we felt like we bought pretty close to what we needed yeah. and what we could afford. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a key point. Do your research. Don't rush into it. Keep looking, there are good bargains out there, but you need to educate yourself first mm -hmm. and rent one or two first. You if may you not can, get what yeah. you want in the rental. It may only be a small class C, maybe yeah, you'll get a better RV idea RV. about how they handle and what you can yeah. put in there and mm -hmm. how many people you can put in there. That's a, that's a big issue. We chose a class A, 40 footer, for several reasons, but some of the big things that really you have to debate is how often you're going to move and mm -hmm. how much floor space you need. Those are mm -hmm. two big things. On a fifth wheeler, it's really attractive. We almost bought one. Yeah. This floor space can be a little slightly smaller on a class A, but it handles better on the road, generally speaking, especially yes, yeah. in high wind. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. So those are some really big points that, and people are going to debate me either way on this because of what they have. And I understand it. Yeah, people's Everyone's people's needs, needs, needs are different. different. Yeah. But going down the road, the Class A diesel pusher is generally the most stable vehicle. You've got two or three axles all on one chassis. You don't have a back end flapping around. Uh, and in high wind, that's a big problem. A fifth wheeler is, we've seen them tipped over and you know, you, it'll actually tip the tow vehicle over. And this way. They'll the jack uh, a jackknife in ice where uh, Class A 
you might spin, but at least you're still going, you know, the whole chassis is still in one dimension. And then your tow vehicle behind the Class A is much smaller yeah. than RV yeah. than the Class right. A. But so uh, does, the fifth wheel is at the opposite. Yeah, so the, the smaller vehicle is in tail front. doesn't wag the dog, as we <laughs> yeah. say. Yeah, the tail is heavier than the body. Mm -hmm. Also, the ride on a Class A with air ride is much better because it's like a big train almost. You're you just really slowly, like gently. It's kind of like yeah. a big boat. You know, you're Even slowly better than going a over. Car. Better than a car. Better really than a pickup like truck. Yeah. yeah. So you, the ride and everything in here is probably gets less damage mm -hmm. because of it. You're up higher. You have this big window, mm -hmm. big and vision. we find that that was one surprising thing that we really loved. Is it's pretty quiet inside. Mm -hmm. The we ride is really nice, and you don't really feel so much like you're on the road. You're kind of just in your home moving, uh, so that's a big thing. So handling, the ride, uh, the other big thing is payload on a Class A with a diesel. You can put quite a bit of weight in these, and I've seen a lot of people that have had uh, fifth-wheelers, and they'll, they'll load them down too heavily, and then they can't pull them, so that's a big issue. When you're going, going up a hill, the hill climbing on a, a diesel is generally better. Uh, you may have more gears, but generally you'll have a bigger engine and they will bog down, but they will keep going and you'll still get reasonably good gas mileage even going up a hill. Uh, the fast, their faster setup time on a Class A because you're not unhooking a tow vehicle from the trailer. Uh, you're able to, you know, you still have to put all the slides out in both cases and hook up but you're not having to back up and, and the backing up alone is an issue. Mm -hmm. Other big debate is, well, everyone says, well, a Class A is a lot more expensive to buy than a fifth wheeler. Well, it, it kind of looks like it is, but in our experience, we're not so sure that's the case. Uh, I'll be honest, we, we have like $100,000 in this 10 year old vehicle and you can buy a fifth wheeler for half that, mm -hmm. that price. price yeah. But when you buy the tow vehicle, you normally will spend sixty to eighty thousand yeah, dollars to get a, a dual dually rear truck. diesel. Mm -hmm. uh, they're eighty ninety thousand dollars, so you can literally have as much money in your tow vehicle as you we have almost in this this here. So, in a way, we got yeah. the mechanical portion for tr mm. for free. Yeah, maybe it's not quite as big floor floor space wise, but I think in all runs, it's not really more expensive to buy a used. Uh, class A. That's that's my opinion, and that'll be heavily debated. <laughs> yeah, and I think the basement in our RV has more storage, and the, yeah. we can install a slice. Yeah. So in our basement, you don't really yeah, if you it's slide wheel, you the, just slide, slide out. it out. You don't have so to really easy. crawl you down in the hole. <laughs> And I if you have heavy, heavy stuff, that's really hard. Yeah. yeah. So that's one thing I really love. So I see lots of uh, fifth wheel or other yeah. trailers. So you have to, you just have the door open now and you have to call in. Otherwise, you use the, the container storage device. you got to watch you don't hit your head on the slide <laughs> yeah. coming out. That's, <laughs> that happened to us that in the gives beginning. That gives you stars. <laughs> that slide doesn't move anywhere when you hit it, does it? Yeah, but you consider the slide you can pull out is yeah. much easier. Yeah. And then you can open up uh, both sides, actually. You have yeah. a door on both yeah. sides so you can open this side and or the other side so and of course I always want to remind you safety wise you have to load the vehicle Evenly, yeah. so it's proper I we have another video we can show you mm -hmm. with air pressure yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and we can go more in detail on later on how you weigh that mm -hmm. but uh, you definitely want to make sure your load is distributed properly on the axles. So for us, overall though, this is our home. We decided to kind of buy up a little bit. Some people stick their toe in the water and they buy down and then they end up buying two later. They'll buy a TT and then they'll buy a fifth wheeler and then they'll buy a bigger fifth wheeler or they'll buy a bigger um, Class A. And, and that's generally what we see a lot. So far we've been in here three and a half years and other than maybe wanting a nicer, newer one, we don't really need anything else than what we have, so that's good. Yes. And we did six okay. weeks of research before we bought, so that's and one so thing. So far, we're really happy about this RV, Class yeah. A. Yeah, now, that's the pros on a Class A, but on a fifth wheeler, they definitely have their benefits too, mm -hmm. and that's, that's what, we, are what so we really have to debate. Yeah. <laughs>
their their floor space can be a little bit larger. They I may love have, their living room area. Yeah, their layouts can be maybe yeah. a little nicer mm -hmm. depending on which one. Yeah, the living room you have a really like a home set. Feels up. like a it really feels home. like a home more yeah. than any, like I think. A, yeah. Like a theater That's kind probably, of style. Yeah, your home theater set up, mm -hmm. big lazy boys. Yeah. They both have that, but the p opposing position of the TV and the seating area normally is better, I yeah, think, on a fifth wheel. wheeler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just have a little more room to work with. Mm. And a kitchen layout. I love it. They have Isn't an beautiful? island. <laughs> yeah, why do you like that? It feels nicer, and they have a lot of a counter space. Yeah, yeah it was the do. island. Yeah. But sometimes the cooking area with the stove. They're kind of a smaller, I think, They have narrower. bigger pantries sometimes, Yeah, they too. have a pantry on the other side. And they can have a coffee station mm -hmm. and a main kitchen station. Yeah, so make it Plus really a wet bar kind yeah, of make it really island. feel very yeah. homey. But in our RV, we can extend the countertop. Yeah. So I think it's pretty... I, I, shape. Because the way I cook, I need more space on my left-hand side. But most of the fish wheel, the, the, the stove... Right next to the yeah. yeah, right next to the wall or the refrigerator. So I to me it's not very convenient because I have to turn around to get things on the count on the island. So it's not very convenient for me to walk in the yeah. kitchen. That's but it's a reason. big open area with a mm -hmm. kitchen and living room, right? Depends oh, on they which have one. different type. Yeah, right? there's so many. Sometimes types. the living rooms in the front. front sometimes the living rooms in, in the, the back. back yeah. Well, and the other thing is the toy hauler starts to come into play now, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of them will now have like an out outside kind half of garage, the back half, yeah. have a little mud room that you can Good. clean your boots mm -hmm. off, bring your ATVs in off the back ramp, and then that can be the patio, which, you know, that's pretty attractive. I really like that yeah. back room. Mm -hmm. We have people living here that have, they, have a side they literally patio. have lots of kids. Toy hauler works best for them because they have the bunk, bunk bed. beds mm -hmm. and, and lots of storage. So, uh, you know, it depends on what you're going to do. Mm. But going down the road now, if you got all those kids, now they're all going to be in the pickup truck. And then outside, <laughs> they got that outside kitchen for entertaining. Or if you want to see a, if the guys want to see a football game, <laughs> they got the beer out there. They got the, they got the barbecue, the barbecue out there, and, and they don't have, have to mess out. everything up in yeah. the house. So I think I can see the the big yeah. benefit for that. So class A doesn't have that so far. No, I don't we think it really, really doesn't. Seen any. Yeah. They have an outside kitchen, and they really don't have toy haulers other than the one Thor that at one time yeah. had. So that's that's a big pros and cons. I love the toy hauler, and that and that's one thing that would kind of sway me that way. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that you really got to think about though is the vehicle you're going to drive once you're parked. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. If you're toll vehicle. When we first had this, Class A, drive it up, park it. Oh, got to get milk. While you're walking or you're we taking a bike, to the you're stuck pretty much right lot. there, right? So. <laughs> Most people will haul a car behind there, which now you're kind of into a trailer anyhow, but they haul pretty well because they're small. Yeah, we have a uh, car, we have an RV, but unfortunately the car we have, Prius, cannot be towed. Yeah, you have to lift it. off four wheels, so that's not even practical yeah. for us. So we ended up using the motorcycle, and we put a, a motorcycle lift on the back, which you can mm -hmm. see the videos uh, earlier that we made in, yeah. in regards to that. How to install the and that works, that works pretty good because you can back up like it's not even there, you know, you have to you worry about the payload. You don't extend your legs, really, yeah. yeah. So you don't need to uh, pay attention to the, how yeah. the angle is going to yeah. be when Just you're backing up. Just need to make up. sure it doesn't fall off. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and it does take longer to put that on than, say, a tow vehicle, you know, with uh, the, the two chains So I and the bars. So I can see uh, pros and cons on that. Mm -hmm. But for us, it works pretty well. Mm. And then on the other side, though, of cons... On a Class A, yeah, you're going to spend more in diesel maintenance. Your oil changes yeah. are a lot more. I think it's like 21 quarts, 22 quarts yeah, for my diesel. Cat 350. Uh, so you're going to spend, at least where we are, you're going to spend $500 on an oil change versus the diesel on a uh, pickup truck is going to be half that probably. So interior-wise, I kind of find that, like in our Tiffin at least, I think they have very good cabinets. Uh, their quality, quality, that's one thing they're really known for. And in fact, this year we have an 07. It, it, 07, 08 are kind of some of the best years for the wood quality. And I know that in some of the other, even the Class A's, but in some of the other fifth wheelers, the cabinets really aren't as yeah. well constructed. Yeah. They're particle board, they're vinyl finish. Uh, so that's something you gotta you know, keep an eye on. Yeah. The other thing is if you're not 
used to backing up a trailer. A fifth wheeler, a fifth wheeler is going to be harder to back up than a Class A. It's not as hard as a TT travel trailer to back up because that's really uh, more difficult. But but you have to have some skills and develop some skills in that area. Also, I noticed that the electrical systems, and I've heard from a lot of people, they may not be as good on fifth wheelers. So you, you have to make sure you pay attention to that level of quality in the, the fifth wheeler. It's, it should have a good payload inverter. And a lot of times they may not have a generator on here, which we have a generator in the front that's also diesel. And we can go quite a long period of time boondocking and generating power. Uh, so that's that's a big issue. So depending on the year that you bought, uh, you, you can notice there, I think, are trends in the quality. We've heard from a lot of people, that, at least in the Phaetons, after 08, the quality may have gone down a little bit. And I think that was the case in the industry. The money was tight, they started laying off, and, and when you rotate all those workers, then you start to have issues yeah. with the quality. Problem now, uh, economy's really good. They're not able to ramp up quick enough. People may not be properly trained in any of those factories, uh, in any of those brands. So the quality may not be as good now because they're trying to rush them through the door. I know they're having a hard time keeping up with the demand. So uh, that's one thing that you have to w watch out for. And in buying used, that's something you want to pay attention to. But generally, in every, any RV you have, you're going to have problems with it. Yeah. It's Systems will fail. You'll have to fix them. And mm -hmm. that's just the way of life. But uh, in general, you got to educate yourself yeah, about don't RVs. Really don't rush into it. Ask a lot of people. And check with private buyers, because you're going to buy private vehicle sales mm -hmm. normally cheaper. Uh, and I and think that's, that's no. it. Yeah. If you already have a vehicle in it, maybe it's better to buy from a dealer because then you can trade up and get rid of the old. But start with what you can afford. Try and buy as much as you can instead of having to keep trading up and rent beforehand. Those are probably the main tips that I would have for you. Negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Try and get it 20-30% lower than retail if it's new. I hope these uh, hints uh, will help you in your decision making for purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to enjoy, I think, uh, when you have an RV. Uh, just the fact that you can sleep in your old bed every <laughs> night when you, you know, anytime you're tired driving is, is a big plus. Yes, yeah, so we can always just pull over and sleep for the night. <laughs> or, or you can cook a meal when you're hungry. Yeah, yeah. so very convenient. So then you know, uh, She can hotel. run and get me a sandwich while I'm driving. <laughs> Don't have to stop. Yeah, that's another reason. Another yeah. key reason to go me. Go to the bathroom, right? <laughs> Yeah, that, oh, that's right. We kind of <laughs> forgot about that. The whole reason we decided to buy one is so she could pee in the bathroom. That's the, when she found out you had to stop to pee in the, in the trailer, pee. that uh, just uh, wasn't uh, acceptable. As long as I can pee any time on the road. <laughs> so. so that's a that's a reason that we meet over on the Class A. That's, like, that's kind of how we decided, yeah. If I, we made the right decision. I think it? so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we hope you enjoy this video and we really hope that, that they can clear up some of your doubts of how to yeah. choose or yeah. decide what uh, RV what you, to buy. yeah, what to buy. So if you like this video, please give us a like and uh, this, uh, subscribe our channel for more tips and uh, maintenance. Give us a comment down yeah, below. Down below if, if you have like. any questions. We'd like mention. to know how how you feel about this and how you uh, enjoy your RV. Mm -hmm. And you can also contact us on the Facebook or our website and yeah. uh, give us any feedback. Yeah. And then we would love to hear about that. All right. Okay. So we see you next time on our lovely float talk. The floating life. Bye bye. Bye bye.